everybody, my name is Hilbert and today we're going to talk about overclocking the new GeForce GTX 1070 and 1080 with the all new revision of MSI Afterburner. Um, today we are releasing MSI Afterburner 4.3.0 beta free. Um, it has uh, new compatibility with, the, with these cards and uh, we have uh, included uh, support for GPU Boost 3.0 that means that there are some slight differences in, uh, in core voltage tweaking as well as uh, the clock frequency uh, changes that uh, we can apply to these cards. Uh, by the way, I'm from the Netherlands, so English is not my native language. I do apologize for uh, for a bit of dialect that you'll be hearing, and if I'm seeking words, I again do apologize for that. All right, let's get started. So here we have uh, the new uh, MSI Afterburner. It uh, will be available starting today from our download section in Guru 3D, as well as the download uh, pages of MSI, of course. Um, over here we have uh, Unigen Heaven, the benchmark. Uh, if you see it stuttering a little bit, it's because the GPU is recording this video as well at 60 frames per second. So let's get started. Um, as I stated, uh, a couple of things have changed with uh, with uh, GPU Boost 3.0. Uh, first of all, you can overclock the old-fashioned way with your sliders that you're used to right here. Um, but we also have some cool stuff. Let me quickly start that up with a voltage frequency curve editor. It's a new way of overclocking. We'll get into that later. Uh, first we're going to do a little bit of manual simple overclocking the way you used to. So if you look over here you can see core voltage. There is a change here. Um, this used to be offset based uh, core voltage uh, increments. This is now percentage page based. That's so that that's that's a pretty big difference. I'm not a big fan of it but hey um, that's the choice of NVIDIA, of course. So pretty much you can just increase your uh, your core voltage now in percentages. 100% is not always the best. A little bit lower could be more stable than, than a higher voltage. So you need to uh, test and tweak it out for yourself. Always increase your power limiter, of course. The temperature limiter, um, if you're fine with your car running to 90 degrees, that's okay. But I am not. We're using the Founders Edition of the GTX 1080, by the way. So it's probably best that you keep it at well, roughly 85 degrees Celsius. Um, increase your core clock frequency over here, just like you used to, and your memory clock. So, and I'm not hitting apply just yet because first we're going over here and we can see that uh, in a default uh, modus, the card runs a boost frequency of roughly 1.8 gigahertz. So that's that's the default. It's pretty high already. So now I'm going to apply the overclock that we just applied here. And there you go. So we're now hovering above 1.9 gigahertz already with this uh, fairly simple and easy to do overclock. Um, the aim for today is uh, to reach 2 gigahertz on the GPU. Um, that's also the maximum this GPU can take. So uh, we won't be uh, going... Uh, a lot higher than that because uh, well this uh, this graphics card is also recording this video and if it crashes the video will or the video recording will crash as well so we won't uh, we won't like that right so let me just quickly open up the hardware monitor and place the window nice and neatly so I'm going to reset um, like I said this is your standard overclocking that you're used to uh, right now we're going to curve based overclocking so in the future with the final build of MSI Afterburner, we're going to place a button over here. Uh, when you press it, you, you will open uh, the, the, the curve-based editor. Right now, you're going to use a hotkey for that. So press Ctrl and F, and the voltage frequency curve editor uh, will open up. So again, uh, when I press uh, Ctrl F again, it will disappear, and when I press Ctrl F again, it will appear. Ctrl F, remember that. So this is a little bit new and something that you guys won't be used to and that's pretty much why I wanted to make a, uh, a small video about it. Um, it's a two axis based uh, uh, curve editor. Over here you can see the, the, the voltage uh, on, uh, on, the, on the x axis and on the y axis of course the clock frequency. The curve here is um, uh, your clock frequency that increases relative to the voltage point. So um, basically we can overclock in three ways here. We could um, say that uh, if, if the GPU reaches a uh, voltage state of uh, roughly 900 millivolts, we do not want that clock frequency to, 
clock frequency to be close to uh, 1700 megahertz but we could increase it um, nothing is going to happen when I hit apply by the way but just for brevity's sake I'm going to show how that works so that, that would be a, a very simple and easy way to to increase the clock frequency uh, already a, a little bit um, it's not the best method uh, to overclock it's well, like I said it's available in GPU boost 3.0 that's why we implemented it um, you probably want to overclock another way um, I'm going to hit reset here and now we're going to the second option and that's a linear overclock so basically on my keyboard I'm now pressing the shift key and I can pick any one of these uh, these uh, for uh, these uh, points right here and increase uh, the clock frequency relative to the voltage state so um, normally when we're at a uh, thousand millivolts the GPU would do well almost 1800 megahertz we're now increasing it with 127 megahertz so when we hit apply uh, the clock frequency that you see over here should increase to roughly well almost uh, 1.9 gigahertz let's see if that happens a little bit over well let's just say the good 1.9 gigahertz so that's that's a pretty good overclock already by the way this is the point where you also want to be adding a little bit of extra voltage uh, especially once you reach um, the 2 gigahertz domain on the core or boost uh, clock frequency you want a little bit of extra voltage inside that uh, inside that GPU of yours so this is uh, linear overclocking um, I just showed you increasing the core for uh, the core frequency of course but you can also decrease it so let me just hit apply and you'll notice that boom we're now at 1.6 and 6 gigahertz so that's, that's a pretty cool way of underclocking or overclocking uh, your, your uh, graphics card of course there's a third manner um, for linear overclocking I just press the shift key uh, and, uh, and change the for these, these points over here um, when I hold the control key we can now, we can now overclock uh, the, the frequency in megahertz based on curves and that and pretty much relative curves and that that's pretty nice uh, that's going to give you a little bit more leash and leeway to overclock uh, more precisely because um, in, in, the, in the lower voltage ranges um, you probably could go a little bit higher on your clock frequency and in the high voltage ranges yeah, well you can do a little bit little bit less so if I do this curve right here we should be reaching 1.9 gigahertz we're going to give it a little bit of extra voltage and let's see we should hit at least 1.9 gigahertz now I hit here we go well 1.9 there you go so that's already a pretty good overclock um, that's the probably the most convenient way of overclocking um, the card if you wanted to do the, uh, the overclocking through the curve editor like I said you can also, also overclock uh, the old-fashioned way with the sliders or you can use the curve editor whatever you want to do it's all good it's all fine and it all will work so we've been testing with uh, this new revision of uh, MSI Afterburner for a couple of days now and uh, I've, I've been able to make some, some profiles um, for us our maximum is roughly 2 gigahertz on this GPU um, so right now I've created this curve that, that was saved in, the, in this profile I've increased my core voltage towards 100% I've increased the power limiter the temperature limiter is set at well just over 80 degrees so don't want it any higher than that and um, also there's of course the memory clock um, you can increase it with roughly uh, well at least 500 megahertz I think uh, some samples will go higher some samples will, uh, will, will, will take a little bit less but this is pretty much it it's double that rate so you need to uh, multiply the number by two so when you look over here you see 5000 uh, megahertz in, uh, in reality the effective data rate is uh, 10,000 uh, megahertz or uh, 10 gigahertz pretty awesome that's uh, that's due to the, the GDDR5X memory that is being used alright so we hit profile free and we're going to hit apply and we should see roughly 2 gigahertz on uh, on the GPU right now there you go as you can see the memory is uh, now overclocked to one pardon me 11 gigabit so that's uh, 11 gigahertz on the effective data rate and that is pretty good <coughs> alright you guys it was a quick overview of overclocking uh, this graphics card uh, with the new voltage and uh, and of course frequency uh, overclock options in the software um, 
The software is available in the download section starting today. Uh, you can also download it from MSI, of course. Uh, have a lot of fun. Thanks for, uh, for watching this video, and until next time, bye-bye.